Welcome to the Mutation Quantification Webinar with Mutation Survey Software. My name is Fu Quinn, and I will be the presenter for this webinar. We will first discuss the two different ways of importing data and the importance of using GenBank SEQ and our reference file for the analysis. Then, we will move on to the Mutation Quantification function of Mutation Surveyor. There are two different options of quantification that you can select from. The first is by using a reference to quantify the mutation, also known as standardized allele ratio. The second method does not require a reference and is calculated directly from the sample. Mutation Surveyor uses the GenBank, SEQ, and reference files to distinguish normal allele from a variation and compares the peak intensity for both. The last topic we will touch upon is the quantification of low frequency variance using the process 2D small peaks option in the quantification dialog box. There are two ways that you can import data into the software. The first is to use the file drop down menu and selecting the open file option. The second way is to simply click on the photo icon located under the file tab. Both methods will bring up an open file dialog box. From here, you can load either a GenBank file, SEQ, or reference file for the analysis. If you load a GenBank file, the position reported for convocation will be relative to the GenBank file and vice versa for the reference files. If both are loaded, the GenBank and SEQ files have priority over the reference files. The Mutation Quantifier tool can be accessed from the toolbar by clicking on the icon shown here. After clicking on this icon, a dialog box will appear with a couple options to choose from. The first topic that we will discuss is the standardized allele ratio method. For this method to work, you will need to have standard samples. The first standard, at 0%, is a sample file that is your normal. This should be the reference sample that contains all the position of interest with no variation at those positions. The second standard will be the sample that contains variation at the position of interest either homozygous or heterozygous. The default is set to 100%, which is homozygous, but you can change it to 50% for heterozygous mutations. If you do not define your standards, the software will automatically pick the best standard for each contake. If you have multiple samples per contake, this method works very well. However, if you have fewer than three samples per contake, you might want to consider defining the standards for a better quantification. In this example, I will specify my standards. Next, you can specify the position of interest that you want to quantify by or quantify all process mutation called by the software in the project. For position of interest, you must specify the position relative to either the GenBank, SEQ, or reference files, depending on which one you use. If both GenBank or SEQ files are used with reference files, the GenBank and SEQ files have priority. If you are finished setting the standards for the reverse trace as well, click OK and the report will generate. This is the toolbar of the quantification report that you will see after hitting OK in the dialog box. To change standard 2 percentage from 100% to 50% for a heterozygous variation, click on the Edit Groups icon. This will bring up a separate dialog box. You will select your standards here like before, but will change the percentage of standard 2 to 50% and leave standard 1 at 0%. Then, click on the Update button to refresh the quantification. Hit OK to exit out of this dialog box and go back to the main quantification table. The report table will generate with all the relative information from the quantification. The sample names, GenBank file, and standards used for the quantification are specified in these columns. You can sort these columns by clicking on the column header. The base position of variation are specified in this column. Within standard 2 column, you can tell what type of substitution occurred at the indicated position by looking at the percentage in front of the sample name. 50% indicate heterozygous substitution and 100% indicate homozygous substitution. You can also look at the mutation column to see the base change for the specific variation. For a heterozygous substitution, the report will only display the mutation nucleotide change. For example, the first sample is a C to CT change, but will only display C to T change in the report. The SE drop and SE gain stands for a single color drop and single color gain. The SE drop measures the drop in peak intensity 
by comparing the normal peak from standard 1 to the first four peaks on both sides of the sample greater than one base pair away from the normal peak of the same wavelength. The SC gain is calculated the same way as the SC drop, except it uses standard 2 to measure the mutant peak gain in intensity. You can double click on any of the variants to bring up the electropharogram of the position of interest. I double click on the first sample to bring up the electropharogram of the sample and both standards. The position of interest is indicated by a red dot on top of the mutation peak. The peaks with the red bar indicate the mutant peaks that were used to calculate the SC gain in the sample. The SC drop would compare the C peaks. You can therefore review all your quantified substitution with ease. We will now move on to the simplified allele ratio. When you select the simplified allele ratio in the dialog box, the standard selection drop down box becomes grayed out. The simplified allele ratio does not require standards in order to quantify the variation. It simply uses the GenBank SEQ or reference file, depending on what type of file is loaded, to determine what is the normal allele and what is the mutant allele. It then uses the peak intensity in the sample to calculate the percentage of mutant allele versus the normal allele. You still have the option to choose between points of interest or process mutation. After selecting the design options, Click OK to generate the report. The report table for simplified allele ratio is similar to the standardized allele ratio but with a few key differences. There are still columns to indicate the sample name, positions, and mutation letters. Note that for heterozygous substitutions, the mutation letter display are the same as the standardized allele ratio. If mutation is a C to CT change, it will only display the normal allele C and the mean allele ST. The other columns are unique to the simplified allele ratio quantification and will be discussed in detail next. The first column is the normal height in RFU, which is just the measure height of the normal allele in the sample as defined by the GenBank SEQ of reference files. The second column displays the peak height of the mutant allele detected at the same position that is not present in the GenBank SEQ of reference file. The normal neighbor column is the normalized value obtained from the average peak height of the first full base position on both sides of the normal peak that are located greater than one base pair away and have the same color as the normal peak. The mutant neighbor is essentially the normalized value of the mutant peak that is detected in the sample using the same criteria as the normal neighbor. The fifth column displays the percentage of the no normal allele present. The last column displays the percentage of the mutant allele that was detected. For a heterozygous variation, it can range anywhere from 40 to 60 percent. The saving function is the same for both standardized and simplified allele ratio. Click on the Save icon button in the toolbar to save the report as a text file. Now that we have discussed the standardized and simplified allele ratio, we will now move on to discuss quantifying low frequency variants such as somatic mutation, mosaicism, or heteroplasmy. In order to quantify low frequency variation, you must have selected Check 2D Small Peaks option and set the threshold for the peak intensity. Usually 200 is a good number, but optimal settings will depend on the dataset. You can try to set different thresholds to see what is best for your dataset. Run the analysis with this setting selected. The green horizontal bars indicate positions that could possibly have low frequency variance. This is detected by checking for minor peaks under the major peaks that is greater than the set threshold in the settings with the same color in both the forward and reverse direction. For more information regarding low frequency variant, please refer to the Pacific webinar. Click on the quantifier tool to bring up the dialog box. Here, we will select the simplify allele ratio and process 2D small peaks option. Hit OK to generate the report using only positions that were detected by mutation surveyor as being possible low frequency variants. The columns displayed are the same one as discussed before. We can double click on one of the sample that contains a low mutant percent to see the electropharogram. By double clicking on the sample that displays 7 percent mutation percentage, it will bring up the electropharogram of the specific sample. In the electropharogram, the position of interest is indicated by a red arrow on top and a red dot on top of the mutation peak detected. You can scroll back and forth to see if there are any other low frequency peaks 
similar to the one detected. Here, you can then review the data personally and decide for yourself whether or not this could be a real low frequency variant. In this case, a somatic mutation in the TP53 gene. The report can be saved by clicking on the save icon in the toolbar. We discuss a different method for importing data and difference in reporting for the base position when you select different types of files for analysis, such as GenBank, SEQ, or normal reference files. Then, we discuss the two different methods of mutation quantification and the difference between them. Lastly, we can use the mutation quantifier tool to quantify a low frequency variant given that the check 2D small peak option was selected in the process settings. This concludes Soft Genetics webinar on mutation quantification with mutation surveyor software. If you would like more information or want to try a free 30-day trial, please visit www.softgenetics.com or send an email to info at softgenetics.com. You may also request for online training if you are interested in learning about the software and its capabilities. Thank you for joining me in this webinar.